Hey, what's going on my 46,000 amazing friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic today. And uh, if you're new to my channel, my name is Jason. I do a whole bunch of tips, tricks, tutorials on filmmaking and photography. But today it's gonna be about filmmaking and videographers, mainly for the fact that we're gonna be talking about this thing right here. This is the Port Keys EVF. Now, if you are a cinematographer and have a cinema camera, you won't have an EVF. Now, this doesn't just apply to Sony people. This can apply to other companies as well. Like the Red Komodo doesn't have an EVF. The Canon C70 doesn't have an EVF. I think some of the Blackmagic cameras don't have EVFs. Zcam cameras, so on and so forth. There are a whole bunch of cameras that don't have EVF, specifically the cinema cameras. Even the FX3 doesn't have an EVF, but it is classed as the cinema line and it's meant to be a cinema camera. So one of the biggest reasons why I need this is 5% of my work, I actually do a whole bunch of shoulder rig stuff. So if there is someone talking to the camera and I'm doing a, a shoulder rig setup, having an EVF there is actually gonna be really beneficial for stability. So one, that's gonna add another point of contact when I'm doing handheld work. So I've got this shoulder rig right here. I've got two handles. I've got the shoulder pad. So that's three points of contact. And I actually place my head on the VMAP battery so that's a fourth point of contact. Now the fifth point of contact is the eye cup on the EVF. So that's five points of contact. Essentially, the way my body moves, the camera is gonna move. So there's pretty much going to be no micro jitters. There's just gonna be natural camera movement, which is really good. And I absolutely love that. I hate micro jitters. Micro jitters is pretty much the worst thing you can get in filmmaking, just the really small, unprofessional, unsteady shots. But having that EVF there gives me that extra point of contact and it is really good for handheld work. Now the second one is actually framing and composition. Now when I've actually got this handheld rig onto my shoulder, I can't actually see my monitor. So for me to actually see the monitor, I would need to mount it almost at the front of my lens for me to actually see it and for the shoulder rig to actually feel comfortable. Otherwise, I'm holding the FX6 in front of me and that's gonna be burning my bicep. I know, I train, I train, but it's still gonna be burning my biceps and hurting a lot because I've done that before and damn, that was painful the next day. No thanks, no thank you. I'm not gonna be doing that again. So if you do actually have that eye cup to your eye and you got it on your shoulder, you're gonna be able to frame and compose your shot a lot better. So you're not gonna be uh, trying to guess exactly where the camera's pointing to and you're not gonna to have too much headroom and crop in and post. And you're just gonna save a whole bunch of headaches in post-production. And hopefully you're gonna be framing it perfectly right there and then. Now, another reason is if you are manual focusing, this is going to help you dial in your manual focus points. The great thing about this is that it has every single feature in this thing as my monitor does. Sure, it's the same brand. My monitor is the Port Keys HS70. I've been using it for ages. Swear by it, such a fantastic monitor. But this has every single feature in it. Uh, even if it's against other monitors, it's got pretty much the same. Waveforms, false colors, uh, guidelines, anamorphic de-squeeze? What? In an EVF, an anamorphic de-squeeze. That is so good. It's got four custom buttons at the top that I've actually programmed it to what I need. It's got focus peaking, so many more options. It is so good. But focus peaking is one big feature that is really good because if you do have a manual lens and you need focus, Using this is going to be so much more accurate because if you are looking at the screen, sometimes you could miss focus and that's not good. You can't fix focus in post-production. You have to nail focus right there on the day. And that goes the same as if you're actually filming in very high key situations and your monitor isn't bright enough, the EVF is actually really good because the image won't be washed out on there because obviously your eye is pressed up against the eye cup. And same again, it's gonna save a whole bunch of headaches in post-production to be able to get the shot perfect rather than miss something that you couldn't see because there was so much light into the screen. Now, I think the great thing about this one is that you can power it two different ways. You can power it through a Canon LP battery, which is great. I don't own any, but I've got a Canon LP uh, dummy battery, so I could use that if I really wanted to. Or you can power it through DTAP through the DC on the back. Now, you guys know that I use uh, the VMAP batteries on my FX6. So I just detap it through that directly into here and I can power it pretty much all day. I, I power everything through my VMAP battery, my monitor, my focus pulling, the, the camera itself, and obviously the EVF as well. 
Now in terms of quality, this one is at 1440 by 900 pixels. Now that is pretty decent. Now a lot of them tend to be around that 1080p sort of pixels. Uh, in terms of price, this just blows every other brand out of the water. You've got uh, Zucudo, you've got the Zcam ones, you've got Blackmagic ones. There actually isn't really many around. And Port Keys is probably one of those ones that you might actually consider for your professional production. When it comes down to Zucudo, I know the high-end Zucudo ones are like $1,500. That's almost three times the price of this one. Now, when it comes to the Zcam one, that's about... I think there was one for about $1,000. It's twice the price of this. And the Black Magic one is like almost the same, $1,400 or $1,500. That's three times the price of this. So you're actually getting pretty much the same amount of quality, if not better, in a cheaper package. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? The great thing about this one as well is it has a diopter on the front. So obviously everyone's eyesights are a bit different. It's just like your EVF on your camera and you can adjust it. So if you do have prescription glasses, you can take it off and uh, adjust it and get everything in focus. So that is a really good feature here. And it is wood grain. It looks kind of cool. Yeah, come on, look at that thing. It's great. The only little minor downside about this that I don't like is the eye cup. I mean, it's just a piece of foam attached to a bit of Velcro. I mean, if you're gonna pay some really, really, really cheap budget prices, they're gonna have to cut costs somewhere. And yeah, I really wish this was a little bit more comfortable. I mean, when you press it up against your eye, it's perfectly fine. It's not 100% amazing, but it is what it is. Uh, and if you do wanna upgrade your eyepiece, you can probably just buy another one and just strap it on there as well. But yeah, that's just a little bit of nitpicking right there. Something that I don't really like, but it is what it is. Now, when it comes to mounting options, there's actually three uh, quarter inch tripod mounts on the bottom, or you've got a NATO rail as well. So I've got this mounted on a NATO rail so I can quickly slide it off and take the whole thing off. So it really depends on how you actually wanna set it up to your workflow and to your custom rig. So one of the things you might actually have to purchase getting one of these is a magic arm and trying to rig it up to, it really depends on what kind of rig you got, what kind of camera you got, and just how you actually wanna be setting it up. Now, the great thing about this one is it has HDMI input and SDI input. Now the FX6 has both HDMI and SDI output. So there isn't gonna be any latency issues if I'm passing it through my monitor and then directly into the EVF. I'm gonna be getting the exact same feed as what I'm getting uh, through the camera, which is really, really good. And that's what I recommend you doing. If you do have separate feeds, put it into your separate feed directly in here and having the option of SDI or HDMI is so good. So I use the SDI input for my monitor and the HDI input for my port keys EVF. So this could actually be really good for FX3 users. Now, we all know the FX3 doesn't have an EVF and EVFs, we've just proved that could be really important in a few different situations with shoulder rigs and uh, high key situations, framing and composition, extra point of contact, all those things that can actually really help your production. So if you do actually have an FX3, this could be something to look into. But what do you guys think? Do you guys have an EVF? Do you guys use the EVF? Have you used anything different? I know there are a whole bunch of people out there that have other suggestions, but hands down, this is probably the best one on the market for the price. So uh, definitely check it out. Link will be in the description below if you do wanna check it out. I'll put uh, other links in the description below if you wanna check out the other ones as well. They are much more expensive, but you can definitely check them out, it all depends on your budget and your workflow as well. And that guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you already haven't. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. All right, let's get it.